Hey, hi guys, welcome to Cafe IO. And in this video, we are going to be talking about AWS SageMaker Studio Lab. This is a IDE or an ML environment where there's zero setup, it's completely free, and it's an all round Jupyter environment. Pretty much everything that you need to get started with doing development on cloud. I think this is a competitor to Google Collab. We'll see how it goes. But uh, this doesn't require any kind of uh, AWS account or any sort of billing attachment to it. We will get started and see how this happens. How, 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 how do we use it? So uh, just going over the website and then we'll go over and take a look at quick demo. So it says it's free machine learning environment that provides compute storage and security. And, and we'll take a look at how much that is. There are certain limits around it, which are, I think, very strong. Uh, they could have been a little more lenient. The best part is you don't really need a AWS account or configure any sort of identity or anything. You just need to click here, which is get started with SageMaker Studio Lab. It will take you to a sign up page you know, where you can request a free account and be done with it. I already have a signed in account, hence I don't get that sign up set up, but you can sign up and they usually approve within a day. Uh, there's GitHub integration and uh, there are a lot of pre-configured notebooks that uh, I think is quite useful if you want to get started with uh, with quickly with a with a machine learning environment. So so let's let's take a look and go a little more in detail as to how it works. So as with everything with AWS, this is the kind of diagram they put. So you have a studio lab, which is, you know, a neat environment. The domain is studiolab.sagemaker.aws. They have explicitly kept it outside of core AWS domain, I think, and they have made it a part of SageMaker domain. And when you, you if you want to create a SageMaker account or a SageMaker studio, which is, a, which is the larger service that they do, uh, you need to create a domain of your own. So that's there. There's compute infrastructure, which is 12 hour CPU session for intensive algorithms and four hour GPU for deep learning. I think that this is reasonable, but I think the hard limit makes it a little difficult. I don't know how long can you leave it running and stuff like that. You can build your ML projects. There isn't a, there aren't a lot of services attached to it. It's basically a Jupyter notebook environment that we'll see, but you can access Git and GitHub. You can use the 15 GB of free storage to save snapshots of each session. And uh, that's where you can pick and you can, you know, have a machine learning model that's ready for production. Key features, no account needed. Uh, you can select the compute power. It's kind of just two selection, CPU, GPU, etc. Persistent storage and there's packaged ML frameworks. And this is, this is a no fuss kind of a setup. So let's go over it. So. There are, isn't a lot of onboarding step. You put in your email address, they approve it, you create your account and you are bang, start. Uh, there isn't a lot, there aren't, uh, there isn't anything here as well. If you go to the home page, you're just greeted with this page. This is the landing page. There isn't a lot, of, there aren't a lot of settings too. You just sign up, change passwords. So I think this is in the making and we'll probably see more features, but the runtime status says stop and uh, there are certain limits. So it's it said 12 hours, but uh, I think you can use now the CPU for up to four hours with a limit of eight hours. So you can have two bursts of four, four hour each and GPU is kind of clocked at a four hour, but this is a 24 hour uh, period. So I, I will not probably choose GPU right now. And every time you use GPU, they kind of give you a warning so uh, i think it's 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 a good idea to stick to cpu right now i think it will be faster to get started you can see certain resources in communities but we'll get back to it you click on start runtime and uh, they give you a weird looking puzzle which is you know it says that click this this is the kind of puzzle that i get every time you have a car and uh, around a keyboard and you find a trace and part interesting way of doing captcha i haven't seen it uh, th this is meant and targeted, I think, for beginners and uh, college kids. So you can also leverage AWS Machine Learning University. And while that, while the environment gets created in the project runtime, is set, I'll just quickly walk about it. So the Machine Learning University is more of a self-learning uh, and a self-service guide for learning machine learning. There's lots of stuff you can brush up on basic 
choose a learning path there's a youtube channel you can select specializations like do you want to do nlp do you want to do tablet data do you want to do computer vision decision trees responsible ai the stunts of resources you can also explore certifications if you you know if you feel that you have mastered those things and that that's pretty much it now now it i already this has started and as you see the session shows 3 hour 59 minute which is the session has just started it they give uh, you know a block of 2 4 hours so i'm going to click open project and when you open project right it effectively opens up a jupiter lab environment this isn't uh, i would say this doesn't compare really well with the studio that i originally had in mind and i thought that they would have given some easy integrations to their aws services uh, but no i i think there's an opportunity to integrate this with saas services like you know aws forecast and stuff like that making a life little easier but uh, hey that that's what they have so there's a getting started notebook there isn't a lot of information here we'll just see so the brand the, the environment is neat and clean i usually prefer the simple interface making it more stand out and cleaner so they just give you some sort of a running project uh, and uh, so basically it's 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 logged in it's not going to load a kernel or anything like that talks about sagemaker distribution images the lab supports the distribution images which uh, are basically pre packaged solutions you can create notebooks source code files and access the terminal pretty much like you would do in a jupyter environment uh, python packages you know you can do perconda install or you can and uh, you can then use numpy and then this is what i really liked uh, where they have given a demo of it so you can uh, effectively these are instructions where they have baked uh, commands into it so you can uh, kind of import the studio uh, which is uh, sage maker studio environment and it's kind of now closed cloning stuff so yeah now you get all the idea all, all, all kinds of basically i sorry i was not with this i'll go back to getting started sorry i'll just click the click of the switch so yeah what i've just done is i've copied the studio lab examples uh, it just is a click i'll just move forward and you can also do the same thing for aws machine university the moment you click clone it's going to go to git and copy it into the working directory which is uh, studio notebook labs you can do the same thing for deep learning hugging face you can switch to gpu runtime uh, and then you but you'll have to navigate back to the project page uh, and then you can manage your conda environment and packages the way usually the the, the usual day that the way that we do uh you can also create new conda environments using the command line which uh, i think is nice i don't know if you can do this in uh, google collab but uh, i i find it good you can also do this like notebook jobs and stuff like that uh, but then this requires you to be authenticated with aws account but uh, i don't have it ready and you, you this this is kind of a this is the kind of integration that i was talking that they could probably give smaller connects to back to aws but i don't have a account set up so i wouldn't go there but this is a good feature to do uh, for example you are running something interactively and there's a longer compute that you want you can take that piece of code push that into a notebook or a python file connect it to a runtime and wait for the results uh, you can also install extensions and uh, you can basically uh, do everything that jupyter lab does which is something i like a uh, collab environment is kind of different this feels more at home uh, and uh, then there are some you can uh, create badges and stuff like that for example you can open in do open in studio links to your github repository for so so what will happen is if you create a you know this code it will basically give you a batch like this so instead of open in collab it will open in uh, studio lab and then basically it is a basic it is effectively a notebook and with instructions as to as to what to do so it's going to install the deep learning environment you can click copy to project and it will go copy so it has made all the beginner stuff quite easy and interactive the movement of code from git to a compute environment setting up of stuff and all is very interesting
let's just quickly check out uh, what are the lab examples and i think that's pretty much it so the most important thing i think is connecting uh, to aws where there is a detailed notebook which is you know how to deploy a hugging face pre-trained model to save SageMaker endpoint uh, these are all in api based conversations uh, you can work with other aws resources as well but uh, that requires boto3 which is an aws cli which is uh, this is not native to this i know they are offering this from uh, the studio lab but uh, you can do this pretty much from anywhere you can take this notebook and run it in from any environment uh, assuming you have the aws credentials and the networking taken care of you should be able to work with it so there isn't any rocket science here uh, it's basically using SageMaker SDK and doing that interactively so I'm not going to go in depth, depth in there but it's good that they have given some packaged uh, examples to do and then there's different examples for some sort of a stable diffusion conversation uh, let's go back uh, then there's geospatial data science wow I haven't seen this I, I'm not sure what this is so this is some sort of a use case for geospatial analysis I love uh, doing and working on geographical data kind of a side passion so again this I don't want to select kernel here so yeah these are different packages that you use uh, I'm not familiar with I'm familiar with raster IO and RTPI uh, but not uh, with Sentine hub which is fine uh, so this is this is again another pre-packaged template notebook that you can use if you are interested in doing that some sort of a geographical analysis uh, plotting etc quite looks quite interesting wow earth map and stuff so yeah this this is quite useful let's see what's the use case that they are doing so okay it's just analyzing open public data around California lake and counties using geographical vector and then focus Lake Shasta in California in California for analyzing Sentinel-2 geospatial data so some sort of a spectral analysis or something in that space not very familiar but quite good so so this gives you a good starting point to do a lot of stuff and what I like is the amount of pre-packaged offerings accelerators that they have given which makes your life easier and that's pretty much it to the tool uh, beside uh, you know this you can do all sorts of things like changing the theme blah 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 which uh, I think everyone is familiar with I don't want to get into talking about Jupyter features I think uh, no I haven't done a video on Jupyter maybe I don't remember yeah so that that's uh, pretty much it you can also uh, th these two are good features for example you can save notebook save notebook as and revert notebook to checkpoint so it's basically checkpointing in notebooks uh, you can save and export notebooks as a lot of different options etc etc that's pretty much it now when you are done you can probably just you know go back click stop runtime and it's just gonna stop the runtime for you or you can leave it open and let it expire unless you intend to use it again i and then it'll just flush out uh these domains that it had created and i think it it's gonna take a little bit of time but that's okay uh to do, do okay sorry about this let's see what it pops up machine learning blobs there's a hashtag on github uh let's explore this okay it's just shutting down and i think that's fine uh it will take its own sweet time Cool, so that's what I wanted to talk about uh, with respect to this uh, tool. So, you know, if you have liked the video, as usual, please subscribe. If you have a comment, put in comment, give a thumbs up. We would love to get some likes and shares. Thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, finally it stopped.